Oh boy, the Agape Ring. In Dark Souls 2, this ring has a very unique effect. When using it, the player will not gain any souls at all. This was mostly used to control your soul memory, a mechanic that displayed how many souls you've got throughout the game and also some PvP aspects. Normally, we can't have this ring from the start. We need 30k soul memory first and then we can buy from an NPC. But what if we could have it from the start? Well, the rules are very simple, I must wear the Agape Ring throughout the entire game until I kill the final boss. The first effect of doing that will be obvious, I'll not be getting any souls, however, the second effect is tricky. I'll be only be able to use 3 rings god, and this is a much bigger deal than you think. Rings in Dark Souls 2 are not as overpowered like in Dark Souls 1, but they are not as underwhelming like in Dark Souls 3. There is a middle ground. Alright, so let's get started. I'm gonna be choosing the knight, and for the gift I'm gonna be choosing the life gems, because you can never have enough of them. Now, if it wasn't obvious, I'm gonna be using some cheats to get the agape ring in things betwixt, but don't worry. I'm gonna be showing on the screen how to do this run without cheats, technically. The only difference is that your soul memory will not be zero, but it's kind of the gimmick of this run anyway. And for last, this icon on the HP bar is proof that I am using the agape ring throughout the entire game. In Majuga, the first thing we do is the usual, we're going to kill an NPC, but not that one! That's right, that one, the blacksmith. And why? Well, because the hammer he drops is very good early game. Also, I can't get the key to get the door open, so he's kinda useless anyway. The force of the Fallen Giants is mostly the same, if not easier, because I have the hammer. I just go straight to the last giant and kill him. After the boss fight, I pay a visit to the map guy. I want his dumb helmet because he gives me extra decks, which is important later, so I can use some weapons. After that, I fight the pursuer and you bet I try to chase him for that one. Well, keyword, trying. Eventually, he's dead and I get the Ring of Blades, which just straight up gives me more damage. And I think it's very good in a run where I can't upgrade or level up, you know. In the Lost Bastille, I make sure to grab this fragrant bunch of your, or as YouTuber Jim Mochi would say, F boy. They are gonna be very, very important later. After that, I head up to the other smith. I get his ass out of the way of this chest so I can open it and get this beautiful hammer. It deals much, much more damage than the one I'm using right now. So that means the other guy in Majora just died for basically nothing. Nice. I then do a detour to Hyde's Tower of Flames to fight the Dragon Rider. I wouldn't say I cheated him, but I messed up the timing. Well, it's a good showcase of how much damage this bad boy does anyway. After that easy boss fight, I go kill this very innocent NPC, Chikadi Rotunda, otherwise I can't go to Huntsman's Cops later. Also, even if I could pay her 2000 souls is way too much to open a single fucking door. No Man's Wharf is just the same, I dodge enemies, ring the bell and go to the pirate ship. The fight with the Frexile Sentry is very easy because my hammer does so much damage, I'm very surprised, keep in mind I am so level 1 and have no upgrades. After they are dead, I make sure to grab this Pyromancy Hand and the Fireball spell. Also this F-boy right here. Back into the Bastille, I just go straight to the Sinner's Rise Bonfire, but I want to be fighting the lost Sinner yet, no no no. The first Lord Soul I'll try to beat is the old Iron King, and for that I'll have to go to Huntsman's Cops. I just run past everything, including the Cage Bonfire and the Invader, and go straight into the Skeleton Lord's boss fight. Those guys are usually tough, but skeletons are weak against strike damage. So I'll be using this opportunity to put the boss OST for a few seconds, because I think it's very underrated, so enjoy the music. Harvest Valley was very uneventful except for the fact that I died to the covetous demon. Huh. Well, I make sure he pays after that. Earthen Peak was actually easier than the covetous demon for some reason. Well, I think it's because I played this game so much and I know where all the annoying enemies are. Well, the important thing here is the mimic containing the workhook, which gives me 5 extra decks when offhanded. After I do the windmill thingy, I fight Mita and she's an easy boss fight, cause my hammer, again, still does so much damage. 
but not for so long because I have reached the Iron Keep and oh my god the Iron Keep this area, this fucking area is the sole reason why I wanted to do this challenge in Vanilla Dark Souls and not Scholar but I decided against it because most people play the latter and why you ask? well because in the Scholar version the Iron Keep is just cancer yeah, cancer, there's no other word for it. Well, maybe another disease, but whatever. Seriously, what were they thinking? Two invaders? A bunch of enemies that aggro from a mile away? Why? <laughs> Just why? Look, I'm the guy who thinks most scholar changes were fine, but I never gonna defend the Iron Keep. Fuck this area. Well, enough whining, but there's not much enough to say. The only saving grace of this place is the life ring plus one, because I need as much HP as I care right now. I also decided to go to the Belfry Soul bonfire and skip the Smelter Demon, because he's a hard boss fight and my weapon is just not very good for him right now. So after putting the Pharaoh's Rock Stone and dying not one, but twice, I finally reached the bonfire. Sure, I'll have to go to Belfry Soul every time I die, but it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> My patience is waning and it is not entertaining. But little by little, I make progress and finally reach the third bonfire. Oh, yeah, there is also the old Iron King. He's a pushover. Not interesting. And I finally got my first Lord Soul. Yay! Well, that was very anti-climatic. However, we are not done quite here yet. I'll have to get this key, to open this door, to get this key, to go to the second DLC, the Broom Tower. For here, I'll be getting three important things. The first thing is the Dexterity Ring right here. It gives me five extra decks, and just like the work hook, it's useful for being able to use some weapons later. And one of those weapons is the Great Sight. Is that how you say sight? Which is just around the corner. What a coincidence. The third thing is the plus 8 Caiastus, which near the second bonfire here. So all the weapons I have right now offer great diversity. The Great Sight hits hard, has a very long range, but it's slow. The Caiastus is fast, but has a very low range. And the Hammer is the middle ground between those two. And with those awesome weapons at hand, I finally decided to go to the Shaded Woods. First, I unpetrified this lady to give her this beautiful mannequin masks I got in the Earthen Peak. After going to the shady part of the woods, punch some trees and get some stuff I'll probably never use, I decided to kill another NPC, this time this guy called Man Scorpion Tark or something, because he drops the second Dragon Ring, which boosts my HP and stamina. I think this fight is kinda buggy. Fighting Nika, her spell hits hard, but I just need patience and evade everything. I beat her on the first try with my great sight. Oh man, this weapon is awesome. I decide to skip the door of Iris because it's useless for this run and I go straight into Tseldora. Here on the campsite, I decide to stop and farm those peasants because they drop the peasant set, which 3 out of the 4 pieces gives me extra ADP. Crucial for better dodging, which I'll be needing later. However, before that, I'm gonna go to the Iron Keep to get the Gold Serpent Ring. I kill Sharon because she's annoying and instead of buying the ring, I just decide to kill this guy because he drops a better version of it. Things really do work out for me in this run, huh? Also, I will probably murder every single NPC by the end of this run. Oh yeah, by the way, the astute viewer might know this won't be the only farming dog in this run. But if you don't know just yet, just keep that on the back of your head, it will be important later. So, title card. One hour later. I killed those guys so much they stopped responding and I only got two pieces. Well, I think that's the game trying to tell me that I just need to move on and go to the Duke's Dear Freja. Or the Pro Imago's boss fight, which I completely forgot. And of course I died to him. Well, I might use this Iago Quartz Ring I got from the Iron Keep for something. After that Kunda Coat boss fight, I just go to the actual boss with a torch in hand to scare the spiders. By the way, did you know this was only added in the Scover version? Because I could swear this was also in Vanilla, but apparently not. 
Freja is no big deal and with a torch in one hand and the Caristas in the other, I kill her on my first try. I then kill this guy cosplaying that other guy everyone kills in Majora, and also get another F-boy, the second guard so is mine. After 10 years I go back to the sinner's rights to fight the lost sinner. I want to be lighting up the arena because I need to defeat two other bosses before, and honestly, I just don't care. She does kick my ass the first time, but I just need to be patient and learn her attacks and openings. Kinda like a waltz where I have my turn and she have hers. Reminds me of the green fight in Hollow Knight for some reason. Eventually, my patient pays off and she's defeated. I get my third guard soul and another F-boy. Now, so far, all the paths to the Lord souls have been simple, but this one is kinda tricky. So, there are four ways to survive the fall of the Majuga Pit, and for three of them I need to use souls. The first way is to pay Garagan for a ladder. The second way is to pay Sharkwar for the Cat Ring. The third way is to have enough HP to survive the fall, which I don't. However, the fourth way is in my reach. I need to have a piece of armor that reduces fall damage. Usually, people buy the Jester Boots, but not only this requires using souls, I also just kill the NPC that sells it in the Iron Keep. But the other armor that does this is the Lion Water Set, and that's why I made such a big deal to get as many f boys as I could. Because in the Scholar version, most of those enemies are petrified. I won't be using all the F-Boys, I need to save some of them, but I'll be using most of them. By the way, in Vanilla those enemies are not petrified at all, so there it's more easy to do this. But that was not as divisive as the Iron Keep was of doing this run in Scholar. Yes, the Iron Keep was just that bad. Ok, so I wanted to put a title card here, you know, 2 hours later, but I got 2 pieces of the set in one rotation. Ah, not gonna lie, that was very lucky. Ok, so to fall into the pit, I will remove everything except the Lion Mage set, the rings that gives me HP, and of course, the Agape Ring. I am essentially naked, but let's go, here goes nothing. That was super fucking close. Oh well, I'm not gonna complain about that. The Royal... Authority is very easy and the site might be the perfect weapon for this. The important part of the girder is the second bonfire, because nearby there is the spot with 20 life gens. Holy shit. And if I use the bonfire aesthetic which I got in the Lost Bastille, I can make this spot respawn. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Cause fuck it, it's my game. Now, to enter the Black Gold, I must first break those pots that have a liquid that breaks my equipment, which is bad, bad news if that happens. Thankfully, the site, being the MVP that it is, has a long range and I could break those pots in a safe distance, but just for safety, I unequipped everything, except the Agape Ring, of course. So the Black Gold really tested my patience because I just wanted to go to the boss, but I just kept dying and dying. So I did the unthinkable. I unpetrified the statue to get to the second bonfire. Yeah, I just don't want to use f boys anymore, you know, it feels bad. The Rotten is not that hard, but I admit I died a couple of times. I think 4 or 5. But with enough determination, I kill him. I get my 4 to Lord Soul. Odia appears and doesn't shut up, and we can finally, FINALLY go to Drangate Castle. The road to the castle is tough, and this part really shows how little really HP I have. And I know you are all tired of me saying that I just rushed to the bonfire, touched on enemies, etc, but that's how you play this game when you do some dumb shit like this. The unusual part is how the Nameless Usurper didn't invade me this time. If I had to guess, it's because I have an impossible soul memory value, so the game gets confused and thinks I'm not in the castle right now or something. Now, the duo Dragon Riders for once are actually tough opponents. The only way I could beat them was to use a Rotten Pine Resin in my Caestus, because they are very weak to poison. Then it's the usual, don't be greedy, attack when you have the big opportunity, etc. 
Also, just like me, the other Dragon Rider has way too little HP for this part of the game. Anyway, after then, I open the way to the Mirror Knight and do a detour to the Black Gulch. And why? Because I think I need more damage and I just know the place. But first, I need to kill those giants to get the Forgotten Key. Thankfully, I got those poison knives from my journey and they are very useful here. And then, the Forgotten Key opens this door in the Magical Pit, where I can get the other key to open the door to the first DLC, Shova, the second city. The only and one reason I'm here is to get Flint's Ring. This ring gives me extra damage based on how hero my endurance stat is or something, I don't know, damage is damage. Anyway, back to the main course and the Mirror Knight kicks my ass a bunch of times. Mostly because the NPC he spawns is very annoying. I actually had to change my strategy here. I used the sight to deal with the invader and then the hammer for the boss because I think the sight was a tad too slow for the boss itself. And it pays off. That was very satisfying. I hope to fight. Anyway, I get this very convenient placed magical resistance ring and then. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Nah, it, was, it wasn't that bad. I am not joking. The first part is fine, but I want to know what was in that chest, but those assholes destroyed it. <sighs> Guess I'll never know. The second part is the hard one, but patience is key here. Yes, I died over and over and over and over, but eventually I reached this hut. And then I just aggroed those guys with my bow that I got from Shuba, by the way, and I fished for backstabs. One by one, they fell. Then I just had to kill the mages and enter the fog wall. I reached the third bonfire and the hard part is over. Seriously, the iron keep was harder, much harder. By the way, this bonfire is called Roy's resting place. I don't know who that guy is, but I'm happy he could rest here, so we all could have this bonfire. Now, remember that pyrograph I got all the way back in No Man's Wharf? Well, here, I'll finally use it. But first, I need to get this ring from Tsudora that, that I forgot. Oops. Well, you know the drill, just use the fireball spell from a safe distance until they are all dead. Anyway, after that, I'll just go to the boss and- Wait, wait, what the f- Do you know this Mifunito can be targeted like an enemy? What the hell? Uh... Oh yeah, Demon of Song. He's nothing special. He hits hard, but he's slow, so just don't get caught. My most beloved prize, however, is his drop. The key to the embedded. Now this is a weapon. The damage itself is huge and has a counter attack thing that deals more damage if I hit an enemy while they are attacking too or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, it's going to be my main source of damage from now on. The only downside is that I need to equip all my main sources of extra decks, you know, the work hook, the helmet, and the dex ring, which is not even a downside to be honest. So I can use it without stats penalties. Damn. Yeah, yeah, all the blah blah blah. Just, I just wanna get this item. Please shut up. There is nothing special about the script. I just dodge stuff, kill stuff. But again, the nameless you super didn't invade me. And I'm very confused, like, did I kill her earlier in the run? Did I glitch the game? Uh, is she dead? Anyway, we all know the path to Velsad is hard, it's unfair, it's bullcrap, and I won't bother saying anything. The fight itself is manageable, but I need to be careful and dodge right so he doesn't hit me. But I need to be careful and dodge right so he doesn't hit me, and then just hit him as I have the opening. Repeat till he's dead, and guess what? He's dead now. Then we see a sad old man, a woman, teleporting, and we get the King's Ring. And just like in the DC Comics movie, we are in the endgame now.
With the King's Ring, I can finally open this big ass door to go to all the escape. Here we have four important things to collect. Those poison knives, this radiant life gen, and this set of two bonfire aesthetics and two mushrooms dropped by those petrified hollows. And that's why I had to save two F-boys, just for those guys, and you'll see why in a minute. Also, this message here reminds me of this joke from Family Guy. The inside of the manor is normal, with the ogres doing property damage as usual. And the boss is... Uh, he just keeps flying and there's nothing special to say, you know? He's easy, he's boring. Okay, okay, I reached this bonfire in Dragon Air and now the magic begins. You see, if I use a bonfire aesthetic in the first bonfire of Audio Skip, I can get all the items I listed way back. But here is the trick. That hollow drops two bonfire aesthetics, but I need to spend just one to respawn. And if my math is right, this means I get one more bonfire aesthetics per loop. And I do suck at the math, but my guess is correct. I can get a bonfire aesthetic for free. Now, remember the pot in the gutter that had 20 life gens? Well, I can use more aesthetics to get those 20 life gens back over and over. But wait, there's more. All the way back in the first of the phalangites, in the first bonfire, if I use a bonfire aesthetic there, I can get this chest back and get 5 human effigies. So all those items, they are in infinite number at my disposal. And isn't that just wonderful? Anyway, anyway, let's go back to the main game and see what awaits me. Some more, some more. Aldia. House. The path to the ancient dragon is... Well, I just died a bunch. Sure, I could have killed those guys with my key to the embedded, but I... It's just so lazy right now. I, I just wanna get to the main boss, man. Eventually, I do reach the ancient dragon. I mash the button to talk to him and get the blood device thingy, and I'll never set foot here again. Now, we go to the giant's memories. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? The giant who is nothing special. He's a pushover. I'm sorry, but there's not much to say. But that's okay because. I can finally go to the Throne of Want, and I just need to defeat the Throne Watcher and Throne Defender. And boy, that was the hardest part of this whole thing. Yeah, you thought the Iron Keep was bad? No, no, this is much worse. This was possibly, no no no, certainly the hardest thing I have ever done in a Souls game. So, let me tell you why these guys were so hard. They are a boss fight in the endgame, literally the second to last boss. So the game expects you to have levels, upgrades, etc. Because they not only hit hard, they are also very tanky. Oh, and they are also a gank boss fight, so double the fun. Now, you might ask, wasn't Ornistai and Small harder? Well, no. Ornestai and Smo were more or less a mid-game boss fight, in the context of Dark Souls 1. But more importantly, the mechanics of the fight are also very different. In this fight right here, there is nothing to protect you, and there is also a pit just for the player to fall off if they're not careful. And as a cherry on top, if you kill one of them after some time, the other one will start healing their partner to full HP. Hell, at least with ONS, you could kill one of them and then the other one solo, but not here with this couple. So, as you're seeing here in the footage, I have tried to kill them many, many times using the traditional method, and it wasn't working. So I thought, maybe I just need more damage. So I went to the Iron Keep to get the Wing of Blades plus one by killing the Pursuer in the Ismeter Demon Room. I should have got that a long time ago, but it wasn't needed until now. So, surely this new ring actually made me defeat the boss, right? I just needed more damage, right? Yeah, no. So, I tried more unconventional methods. Like the cheese method of getting one of them to fall into the damn pit. 
but it was clearly not working even with the best shield I could have. So I just gave up on that immediately. Alright, so remember those poison knives in other skip I made sure to mention? Well, I got a bunch of them, so I tried a ranged consumed only build of them, and at first it was promising, but it took so long to keep going. Each of them took 6 poison knives to get poisoned, and that's not even counting the ones I've missed and the ones they brought with their shields. And the poison damage itself wasn't so great. Also, the audio skip group gave me only 10 poison knives or so, so it wasn't that many. When I died, which was a lot, I had to do the group all over again, 2 or 3 times. Right, so what else? Well, I kept playing ranged, but this time with the Pyromancy Glove and the Great Fireball spell from Seldora. That hollow in Audio Skip who dropped the mushrooms also dropped some herbs to refill my spells. And I also had some rings and armor that gave me spell slots. So with all this, I think I could do some crappy Pyromancy build. <sighs> but it was still no use. So I decided the normal method again, but this time, this freaking time, I remembered there were bright books in all the skip. Yeah, that place is kinda loaded. So surely I could beat them with this amazing buff I had. But I couldn't. I just couldn't. Do you know what else I tried? I tried the Vanquisher's seal. Do you even know how to get this ring? You need to enter the Covenant of Champions, which makes your game harder, and you need to offer something called All Stones. And the easiest way to farm them is to kill this invader in the gutter 50 fucking times. And then, and then, after you kill that guy 50 times, you need to offer the All Stones one by one. And that barely fucking helped, it did nothing, nothing, I still died. I tried everything to beat the Throne Watcher and Throne Defender, everything. Do you know how many times I did the Audio Skip Loop to get all the stuff back? 15 times. And that's not even counting the other areas to get effigies, etc. When I say this part of the game took longer than the rest combined, I am not joking. I'm not joking. In fact, I think I also died more times here now than the rest of the game. And every time I died, every time I had to walk this long path to the boss just to die a few minutes later, this boss this single boss that most people forget that exists was giving me so much headache. It was making me go hollow. However, there was still one thing I didn't try, and that was summoning Benhard. Now, 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 this is not against the rules, but there is a reason why most of these type of challenges don't summon NPC phantoms. It's because it goes against the spirit of the challenge, and also it makes things way too easy. But I was tempted, I just wanted to get this challenge done. And my mind was telling me to do it. It's just a video game. There are no stakes, there is no dishonor. Just summon Benhard, kill the boss, and finish the run and the video. Just do it. Don't keep wasting your time. However, even though my mind was being rational, my heart refused to listen. I knew if I did that, I would be robbed, it would not be the same, and also I could not go back and fight the boss properly. In the end, I didn't summon Benhart. So, what else can I do? Well, I remembered that YouTube was a thing. So I searched this boss fight at level 1 with no upgrades. And I found this peculiar video by Brucifer. And I hope I'm saying your name right. In that video, they used a weapon I didn't have. I tried to ask them for the name, but I got no response. But I knew it from the video it was a trusting sword. And so, by process of elimination, I found it was the Ice Rapier, a weapon that I slept on until now. 
I knew trusting swords were busted in this game, but I never used this particular one. And for a good reason, you can only have it as a random drop in the last DLC. So, of course, instead of going there and farming the weapon, I actually tried something different. I had many boss souls from my journey, and one of them was the Duke's Geofrigia soul, and I knew that one made a trusting sword, the awesome good-looking spider silk. So, you know what that means. I've got boss weapons! I rescued Ornifex, yeah, remember her? And she has a neat mechanic where the first transposed weapon from her is free. I guess it's a reward for rescuing her. So yeah, this is spider silk. Did that help? Did I beat the boss? Of course not! It was clearly not the same thing, so I didn't even try a second time. <sighs> so there was no other option. I had to go to the third DLC. The Frozen Egan Royce. So I killed those enemies to get the Ice Raper for minutes and then hours. Some of them even stopped respawning and some others gave me false hope. But eventually... There he was, the Ice Raper. Ok, it's not over yet, I have to yet kill the boss. Will this weapon guarantee my victory? Let's find out. This is my final build, and with courage and determination, I enter the fog wall to kill the Throne Watcher and Throne Defender. I... I did it! I finally did it! I beat the Throne Watcher and Throne Defender! So, I have finally beat it Dark Souls 2 with zero so- Oh, 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 right, there's Nashandra, oh, right, I, I forgot about her. Get out of here. Shoo, shoo. Just go away. Well, being honest, that duo right here was the true final boss of this run. 
and what a fight. I loved how many builds I could squeeze with this challenge run. That's why I love this game so much. So yeah, it's finally possible to beat Dark Souls 2 with zero soul memory. If you're still watching, all I wanna say is thank you from the bottom of my heart. This section will be just a monologue, without memes or jokes, just honesty. So this video was a month long journey for me and it's my first time doing that and I hope, I just hope it was serviceable and entertaining. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Maybe more will come, only time will tell. And if you wanna know when more will come, just subscribe to this channel. I don't like begging for likes and subs in the middle of the video because I find that very obnoxious, but I think it's fine doing that in the very end. I wanna give a shout out to Arky and Shippy, two people who helped with the audio in this video. Without them, it would be much, much worse. Links to their channels in the description if you wanna check them out. And for last, a huge, a huge thank you for you, the viewer. Huh, cheesy, am I right? But I love saying that anyway. Thanks for watching and have a great day.